Okay, welcome back. We're just set up here and about to do our another battle report on the what's our game called? It's a trap. It's a trap <laughs> rule set that uh, we co-wrote here, me, me and my wife. We've spent a lot of time on it. We've uh, play tested it ad nauseum, uh, and we're just about to do a battle report. So I'm just going to give you the synopsis. We're going to play this out. Probably not every individual little detail. Um, we don't have enough a power on my phone, b memory on my phone. Me, you probably don't want to see us go on about our life while we play a game. So we're just going to do sort of end of turn recaps or if anything exciting happens. Now I'm using my, I'm not sure what the material is called, like a plastic vinyl, vinyl mat. Thank you. And my light stands are very reflective, so apologies in advance for that. So what we've done is we have set up our forces. Uh, the scenario is there's the world of whatchamacallit right there. Um, the rebels are hiding in a nearby asteroid field. So here's the rebel fleet inside this asteroid field. The Imperials don't know they're there. So they're coming in and they're going to do some hot wrought iron question answering from that planet's citizens. So the Imperial Star Destroyers are, are moving in, a little escort fleet moving across. Now some enterprising Imperial officers are sending a couple of little ships to investigate this asteroid field. The rebels have seen them and they realize we got to get out of here. So the rebels job is to exit the asteroid field without killing themselves and just hyperspacing out into space and escaping. But there is an interdictor cruiser or mobilizer, whatever it's called, sitting right here and they can't leave. Their objective is to what? Destroy it. Destroy it. Take that out and then they can escape. Imperials obviously is to wipe out everything else, including the sleeping cat. Um, we've already done the, if you watched the previous videos on this, on this game, you have a sort of a fighter and bomber cap. We've already done the bomber cap and fighter cap limit, and we've used those points to purchase our fighters and bombers. And how many did the Imperials have? Uh, 17 and 13. So 17 fighter points, 13 bomber points. And with that, I have purchased eight stands of TIE fighters, three interceptors, uh, and three TIE Defenders. Um, and with the bomber points, I've purchased six TIE Bombers and... I don't remember what that's called. Phantom? And how many do the Rebels have? 21 and 12. 21 and 12. So 21 fighter points. There's a whole bunch of fighters here, mainly X-Wings. There's um, two, four, six, eight X-Wings, and one, two, three, four, five Z-Ned? Z-Ned Neddy. Z95 Headhunters, that was hard. And then with the bomber points, we purchased six Y Wings and two B Wings. So we're just going to pause the video here, deploy the fighters with their ships, and we'll be back for the beginning of the game. Okay, uh, you've deployed your guys. Um, just hodgepodge, really. Can't really describe where you put everything, but they're all in there. Uh, about to flee for their lives, filthy rebels. Uh, I've placed my bombers and fighters with their respective ships touching the base. Um, so I have basically just um, the elite ships are with the two big ships. Sorry, the, the elite squadrons are with the big ships. And then the chaff is with the small ships. Um, no real point in going into them what's, what's where. It doesn't really matter for you guys at home. Um, so we're going to do the first turn and we're going to, in this game, it's a activation ship by ship activation so i'll activate a ship she'll activate a ship and so on and so forth until everything's activated now when all the ships have moved then we do the fighters and we'll be back whenever we've moved everything and or something interesting happens so stay tuned for turn one okay so uh, my voice is a little distant because i'm on the other side of the table but we're going to do the first action of the game on camera essentially i've moved all my ships except for these two right here and my wife is sending her little ships outside. So there's a juicy little target here. There's a Nebulon B, a CR-90, and, and a Marauder. So I'm gonna use my Carrick Cruiser. He has a speed of eight, which is in this game, eight inches. And he can make up to two 45 degree turns in that eight inches. So my first 45 degree turn is gonna be, boop, heading towards you. I'm gonna move my full eight inches all the way up, you rebel scum. And then I'm gonna move my second 45 degrees there. So now I have my broadside targeting that Nebulon B. And as the rebel scum, you have the unarmored 
cargo vessel Nebulon B, and I have the super duper heavily armored version because I'm the Imperials. We're so much better. So the next part of the game is to um, you have to complete all actions with your ships. Um, there's no like moving everything and then firing everything. It's move your ship, fire your with your ship, and then move your next ship. So now we're going to do the firing phase and in my side arc I get three dice so I'm gonna have my three dice here and I hit on normally you hit on threes well everyone hits on threes at first and then there's modifiers range being one of them you are five and a half inches so that's six inches away which brings us into the medium range bracket which is a zero modifier so I'm still hitting on threes you are the next modifier is the scale of ship you're shooting at so bigger ships are easier to hit, smaller ships are obviously smaller or harder to hit. And um, let's see, what's that? Uh, Rebel Frigate is scale, scale, two, which in our modifier list is small, which is minus one. So I was three, now I'm four. And your movement, the last modifier is the target's movement. Did it move further than half or less? No, it moved at full speed, which was on this modifier zero. So no modifiers for its movement, no modifiers for its size. Um, no, sorry, no modifiers for the range, but minus one for its size. So threes go to four. I have three shots looking for fours. I have two hits. Now you get to roll your saves and just pause the video there and we'll be back and we'll do that. Okay, so she's handed me the phone now. So um, my carrot cruiser fired on that Nebulon B. Now we have, if you see here, we have used the assets from the Star Trek Armada game to activate, to know which ships have activated. So the Imperial ships. So anyone who has one of these little Imperial things has already moved and completed its activation fully, 100%, fired and everything. But these are all out of arc or out of range. And she has done the same. Okay, so you got two hits on you. Now you need to use to see, hope your shields absorbs that. Now you have very basic shields, so you need fives on these to save these hits. So nope. two twos. So the shots have uh, overpowered the shields and gone straight to the hull. Now your hull value on that Nebulon B is what? Uh, six, so I need twos. Twos to damage you. So I get the two dice that she failed, and I'm looking for twos. Of course I roll a single one. And a two, that's one hull point down. How many hull points do you have? You have mm -hmm. two hull points each, so you're half strength. So you are crippled. Anytime a ship goes to half or below, they're crippled. So it means she's going to put a little reminder there that that's got only got one hull point left. Mm -hmm. And that is the first activation where there was combat. Now she's going to move her ship and she'll probably fire back at me with something I'm sure but we won't do that on camera every single one it's just too much time uh, we want these videos to be a little shorter than seven hours so I think my kid is going to bring down the kitten but he's not okay good uh, we'll be back after everything else has moved we just wanted to show you on camera how the turns kind of work out okay so we decided to record this last activation for the Imperials because my Arcutin's uh, little Corvette whatever it's called light cruiser has moved up and it's going to try and finish off this Nebulon B. Um, now on Architons is a typical Imperial ship, it's kind of like the flying wedge or point of bed or B. So it can either shoot once out of each side or twice to the front. So I'm going to choose to shoot twice out of its front arc aiming at that guy there. He's seven inches away which in our table is a zero modifier. It's called medium range. Uh, he moved it, uh, his full value which is zero but he is a small target, so it's negative one. So threes, normally, negative one is four. So I need a single four here to hopefully kill him. I got two sixes, boom. So I've hit him. Oh, sorry, honey. Uh, your shield strength is five. Nebula and B. So the shield. B. Yeah. So my shield is a five. So you got hit twice, you need to roll two fives, obviously. Two fours. Two so fours. I've gone through. So your hull strength on that unarmored cargo carrier, essentially, I need to roll anything but a one to kill him. Okay? With okay. two chances to get a two, 
Boom. So he explodes. So first blood to the Imperials. And that is one more you rebel scum comment from me. <laughs> um, and that's it. We'll be back after, I guess, everything is done. We just wanted to show you the first death of the game. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so um, all the rebel chips have moved. That's why I'm around the side of the table. You can see by the little uh, rebel activation markers. Now, the fighter phase hasn't happened yet. We're going to do that eventually. Uh, but we just want to show you where we ended up. Uh, essentially, the rebels are trying to escape through the asteroid field. Um, my wife made a cool moves with her little ships, her CR-90s and her Nebulon Bs, and this Marauder, trying to pick on anything, but... Uh, my rolling sucked. Well, we'll blame it on <laughs> we'll blame it on the inferiority of your troops training, uh, train training, training because they're trash, and they're basically the dregs of society. So that's why you couldn't hit anything because you can't even spell. So, um, not you. I'm talking about them. <laughs> it's my birthday. I'm allowed to say whatever I, can't I want. Math, yeah, um, impressed cat is impressed, and we'll be back at the end of the fighter movement phase. Okay, so uh, all the fighters have moved and been engaged if they can be. Over here the Imperials from the Star Destroyers are just moving out trying to form a little picket line to protect that guy. Um, over here all the TIE fighters are just zooming in to try and rescue the two picket ships. So you have the Architons right there and the Karak right there. The Rebel fighters have just been coming out of this asteroid field like nobody's business. And the only engagement really is... I'm trying to get a good angle from my stand here is right here so my wife has managed to get uh, what is these x-wings you got there uh yes so you have two x-wings fighting targeting this Carrick cruiser and one x-wing managed to get into base contact with the architons so how this works in this game is any fighters on bombers so if there's any fighter on a single enemy bomber that is res um, resolved first then fighters on fighters and then fighters or bombers on capital ships and we'll get into that in greater detail as the game goes on but we just wanted to stop and take a minute just to show you how a bombing run happens on these ships so the Carrick cruiser has a point defense value of where is my stat sheet uh, Carrick cruiser point defense value of one which means you know you can imagine i get one dice to try and shoot them down now, point defense, any fours are a hit, and fours directly take hull points off of fighters. We didn't want to... We wanted the capital ships to have a little bit of life with shields and hull points and strength, um, but we didn't want that to be the case with the fighters and bombers. We wanted them to come and go on and off the table, and we didn't want the game to bog down. So, any fours are a hit. So, I get one dice to do a single hit point to a rebel fighter, and that is a six. So, I have done a, a hull point. To the rebel bomber they don't have any choice so you just basically pick up one of the stands and now you'll see here the little arrows at two because x-wings have two hull points but now we move it down to one and that's part of the reason why i like using the x-wing or armada assets so the architons is on the hull point or sorry the character is on the hull point of incoming damage to these squadrons and now the architons does the same thing and he has point defense value also of one so he's going. He's going to look for a four, and he does. He gets a four. So he gets the the rebel bomber go or X wing goes from two hull points down to one. Now, um, capital ships. If you go below half hull points, they're crippled, which means everything is halved. Fighters. If you go below half hull points, nothing matters as long as they have a single hull point left or a, a squadron strength left. They fire and do their thing at regular value. So we're going to do that now. Honey, you want to do the fight for the, uh, against the, what's this called, the Carrick first? Yes. So X-Wings, if we look on our little X-Wing chart now, just so you can see at home, we're using our quick reference sheets, which the cat sat on, that's why it's crinkled. Uh, it wasn't me that mm -hmm. sat on it, definitely not. Uh, okay, you want to show the, the nice clean one? Here's the quick reference sheet. And down here you can see the stats of the fighters and bombers and all the other stuff. And then this is our list of ships. That tells us what each of them does and any kind of special abilities. Um, but yeah, let's just do this on camera. So, X-Wings. Their bomb rating is 1. So you get 2 dice. Okay. And you're looking for 4s. Now, uh, fighters and bombers don't care about shields. 
Does that make sense? So bombing runs are directly against the hull structure, so fours. So one hull point. So on here, so that's with the first guy, and you have, oh, that's both guys. So unfortunately you didn't kill him, but you did cripple him, and he's down to one hull point now. I hope you see that. So he's down now to one hull point. And this X-Wing is going to shoot as well. So he gets one dice, and he's looking for a four. A three. So mm -hmm. X-Wing came in, he took a hit from the Arkertons, and he kind of broke off. Uh, and that's that. So that is the first little bombing run out of all these, these hot mess of fighters and bombers. But you can see how simple it is. Just touch the base, roll the dice, see if you do a hit, apply the damage. So that's that. Summary of turn one. Not a whole lot's happened. Let's get these out of the way so it doesn't look quite so crazy. Uh, the cat is so impressed, so bored. Uh, the rebels have trying to flee. Their objective is, remember, to kill the immobilizer so they can hyperspace out anytime. As soon as he's dead, they can just instantly hit the button for hyperspace and boom, they're gone. The only ones who can't are ones that are crippled, so you got to remember that. Their drives are down. Um, the Imperials, I'm trying to race them in here as fast as possible to rescue my picket ships. And luckily, due to some horrendous rebel gunnery, they're still alive. Um, I thought for sure the rebel fighter bombers, the X-Wings, would come in and take them out. But again, not happening. So you can see how quickly this game will turn into a fighter bomber melee in the center. Um, but I would say after turn two or turn three, there'll be a lot less fighters and bombers on the board. Um, so we're going to have to be a little bit more strategic at how we use them. It's not just one big giant blob heading towards another. So for instance, up here, I was going to race these guys in to join the mess. But I decided I'm going to keep them here in the middle of the board to try and protect um, the mobilizer against any rebels that kind of break through. Because, like in the lore, the rebels have a vastly superior, um, superior fighters and bombers. So I don't expect to win the battle over here. And I was heading in to be like, yeah, let's do this. But then I thought, I'm going to lose. I'm going to hold off. Maybe she'll have, maybe she'll be weakened out. Anyway, what's your plan? Um, so I am glad that I finally cleared the asteroid field. Yeah. Um, but, um, see, the Star Destroyer over there kind of worries me a bit. Mm hmm Um, but my hope is to maybe get rid of your guys on this side. Yeah, the little smaller the ships. The little smaller ships so that I can focus a bit more on the bigger ships. So I'm hopeful that maybe... My smaller ships can maybe do something. So you're essentially not... trying to clear out the smaller ships and head this way, so to avoid yes. the big ones. Yeah, that's not, that's not too bad. That's why yeah. the scenario is set up like this. But anyway, that's the end of turn one. We'll be back at the end of turn two or when something interesting happens. And uh, thanks. Um, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back for turn two. Um, we're just going to give a quick update here because I think I'm about to lose my ship. Uh, essentially, the update so far is... The Architons and the Carrick have moved from about here and here. They've moved up that way. Um, the Carrick is crippled, so he didn't. He just tickled the guy. But the Architons came by and foolishly, or no, heroically, mm -hmm. destroyed. You want to put the ship down there where he was? Yeah, he was yeah, she, here. She put her CR-90. Um, she slowed him down from going 14 inches down to what, 5 inches? About that, yeah. And uh, the Argent mm. to take pot shots, and she missed. She needed a 2 to hit, and she missed, unfortunately for her. And then my Argentines came from about there, around, and with its one shot, blew it out of the sky. But now, the MC-80 has come from about there, mm -hmm. turned and come around the asteroid field, and is about to unload... Three shots into the Carrick Cruiser with three dice. Um, on hitting on threes, honey. Go ahead. Okay. You rebel One scum. Hit. Okay. <laughs> you are really I am terrible. rolling horrendous. That's bad. Um, but I'm sure it'll pick up. So I get one hit. What are my shields on that thing? Carrick. Five, so I need a five to save it. I don't. So now you get a chance to kill it. My armor value is pretty crap at a six so anything but a a, a two will kill it finally yeah. so my valiant carrot cruiser goes down i'm gonna take my all right out. so there's him take my activation token off and 
You want to put an activation token there on your... Oh, you did. Okay, so that's just the first Imperial casualty, a humble Carrick cruiser. Okay, we'll be back uh, again in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to go through one of my activations again, just so people can kind of get a grasp on the rules. I am going to activate this um, Dreadnought right here. I'm going to go on to the Dreadnought profile and see how far he moves. Um, six inches. And he can turn one time at a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to move forward six inches. So you just measure stem to stem. So he doesn't go very fast. Obviously, he's an old ship. He goes, he ends his movement there. Now he has an escorting, um, um, what's that thing called? Patrol craft. Um, <laughs> A tartan patrol cutter. So this tartan tartan patrol cutter is kind of defending that ship. So he, although he is a ship in his own right, he doesn't get to activate on his own. He physically has to go with his mate. So he's just going to go with him. Now he doesn't add anything to the firing stats of the dreadnought, but he does add point defense value against bombers and fighters in the bomber and fighter phase. Uh, so that's why he goes with him. But next is to finish my activation. I'm going to choose a target. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any shots off here, but I am, from stem to stem, I'm nine inches away from the Corvette, and I am 12 inches away from the Nebulon B. So let's see if let's I can see. even hit the Corvette. So normally, you would hit on threes. Just put the three there. Normally, you hit on threes. Now, the Corvette is a tiny target, so it's minus two to hit, so I'm going to be hitting him on fives. Um... But he's also going, since they're really zippy canoes, they go 14 inches in speed, and that one did. So it's another plus one. So I'm hitting on sixes. And now I do the range. Range was what? I said eight inches. Mm -hmm. uh, eight inches is medium range. So it's a zero modifier for medium range. So now I see how many shots do I get on a dreadnought. I get out of the front a whopping four shots out of the front arc. So... I'm fishing for sixes, right? Is that what I said? Sixes, yeah. yeah. so fishing for sixes. Okay, four shots on this little, um, whatever it's called, CR90. Mm -hmm. Sixes. Uh, three fours and a five. So, I miss. And now that's the activation done. I put my little activation token there, the Imperial side up, to know that he's physically finished his activation. So that was a big bunch of nothing, but at least you can see what's happening. Okay, back again. Okay, so I, I thought maybe we'd, because the last activation was so uh, unsubstantial, we would do another activation from the Rebel side. So my wife has activated what? Um, my bulk cruiser. Okay, so where did he come from? So he came from over here, yep. and then I moved, and then I turned. And he's going to pick a target? Who's he going to, who's he going to pick on? He is going to be picking on your Dreadnought. My Dreadnought. Okay, so what do you got? Okay, so... Um, he is 12 away. Okay. So that is going to be long range. So that's going to be a minus one modifier. So that's a four. You need fours, yeah. Um, he is... I'm a medium-sized ship. Medium-sized ship. So there is no modifier for so, that. And I'm not going fast. So. so there is no modifier. So I'm going to be rolling three dice because I'm hitting out the side. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking for fours. So the bulk cruiser over here, he, he can shoot once out of the front or three mm -hmm. times out of each side. So he's kind of a broadside ship. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. So, okay, so roll in there and we'll three. see what you get. A six. One hit. You got one hit. Okay, that's still fine. Three. So there's your one hit back. Uh, you can have you. your dice back over there. Oh, thank you. Uh, so now my shields on the Dreadnought, I think this should be fairly good. Um, do, 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 do. No, oh, they're only fives. So I need to roll a five on one dice. And I do. Uh, so I, I'm glad that we recorded this very unsubstantial shot. But anyway, it was a cheeky chance. And you put your activation token down, and now it's mine. So we might as well do another one. Uh, I will activate the Victory Star Destroyer, and I'm going to try and pulverize that bulk cruiser. So let's get to the stats here. Victory uh, class goes six inches. So we'll see. I'm kind of going to be. So I might as well turn a little bit because I don't want to be hitting my own dreadnought. 
Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Because I can turn twice. I can turn twice. I will move six inches up, which will bring me to about there. I'm not cheating. And I'm going to turn forward. And now he has a Lancer Frigate escorting him. So he goes with him. I couldn't use these ships separately like she is. She's just using all her little ships as kind of like, I guess, laser bait. Um, but I'm going to use them for point defense value. Um, okay, so how far away I am from that bulk cruiser? He should be fairly tasty. I am 12 inches as well. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. If you were 12, I should be 12. <laughs> um, so that's long range, so it's a negative one modifier. Okay, so fours. Um, now, you're, what size are you? Your scale, bulk cruiser scale three, so you're medium. Medium, so there is no modifier. No modifier, and you're not going fast. No. Or slow. Uh, so nothing. So I'm hitting on fours, and a victory class Star Destroyer, it can shoot out three times out of each um, port or starboard, or it can combine all of its turbo lasers along the side, and five can shoot forward. So I'm going to get five dice. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to try and cripple that bulk cruiser. What do we say? Fours? Fours. There we go. Uh, ah, crap. Hits. Under average, two hits. Okay, what's six. your shields? My shields are six. Yes, that's right. Because oh. it's, it's a... Yes, six. So okay. they, it's six because it's an older ship and right. the shields aren't quite as advanced. So it's sixes okay. to save these uh, two so hits. Two on sixes, nothing. nothing. Doesn't even add up to half a six. <laughs> well, it does add up to barely half yes, a six. half a six. <laughs> okay, so... I'm getting two shots in on your whole strength. Now, what's your whole strength? So my whole strength here is three. Uh, so I need my a three. armor. Yeah. So you're five, it's right? Five. Yeah. So I will need a three or more to damage you. Now it might not might not seem like a lot, but the ships you've had uh, since needed sixes um, or anything but ones. So fours, fives, or sixes. One hull point off of you. How many hull points do you have? I have five. What? So, okay, so that makes a... That means... Yes, five. So, so that means I have four. Oh, so maybe. four left. So essentially the bulk cruiser uh, doesn't have very good shields, doesn't have very good armor, but it makes up for that by, uh, I guess... In bulkiness? In bulkiness, in redundant uh, cargo or whatever. Anyway, so that's a couple of activations, just so you have an idea of how fast this game goes. Um, we spent a lot of time making sure that the activations kind of went like that because we wanted to do... You know, you can see how many ships are on the table. We wanted to do this in the night. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back as soon as something interesting happens. Okay, just going to do a short recap here. Um, both of my picket ships are now dead. They used to be about there. Um, but this little tiny um, frigate, Mon, Cal Mon, Mon Calamari frigate, came out and blasted him. Did really well rolling. Um, your... Liberty Cruiser came out, uh, damaged this armored Nebulon B, but missed the Star Destroyer. And now you're going to take a cheeky shot with your Marauder. So this little um, Marauder right here is flying in, and he's going to be targeting the crippled Nebulon Armored Frigate. So. Okay, so first it is three inches away. Uh-oh, that's not good for me. So That's closing. So that is... A plus so one. So I'm going to be hitting on two Twos. so far. I'm um, small. You're small, so, so it's back three, to threes. Three, and I moved, didn't move very far, so it's threes. It's threes, so. okay. And he gets two shots out the front. So, so he so he will get three. either two, you can either choose two shots out of the front or one out of each side. But you can't do one out of, one out of each side and two out of the front. Yes. So whereas the Moncal cruiser over here, he can shoot three out of the front and five out of the sides. Um, this guy has to choose which which he's going to do, front or sides. He's going to do front. Obviously. Yeah. So you get so fours. So right down there somewhere. We'll, this one here. So did we, say, we said threes, right? Uh, fours. Th it was, no, it was threes. Oh. It was hitting on three. I'm small. That's four. Oh, yes. You're close. Yes. That's three. Okay. So one hit. One. Now my armor on that... And my shield, I think, is a five on that. Yep, so I need a five to negate that. I don't. I got a four. Mm -hmm. And my my whole point, or sorry, my... You need a three or more to kill him. Oh, uh, my two. gosh. You rebel scum. I have been... 
so bad at rolling. Okay, and that's uh, the Marauder's activation done. Now, who, yes. uh, who do you have left? Um, so I have him left. You have just the Nebulon B over there left. And just to warn you, is the asteroid field is moving. The cat is... Yeah. <laughs> He's slowly moving the asteroid field as he sleeps. <laughs> He's Superstar sleeping. destroyer, or no, uh, super executor, we should, we should have called him. All right, so what are you going to do with the Nebulon B? Okay, so my Nebulon B, he goes 10, and he shoots best out of the sides. He yeah. does not have any front guns. Nope. So well, in in, in the do... in the show, he has front guns, but the overall firepower is out of the sides. If he's shooting out of the front, he's just doing a he's just hitting an odd tickle here and there. So because he he can move ten, and he can turn, and he can turn twice. Yep. So what I'd like to do, um, you're gonna hunt down. I think I'm gonna go after him. Or oh, oh. maybe I should. Go no, after him. I wouldn't. If I was you, I would I would finish Pick off that off. little ship. Yep. Okay. So. If he goes straight, oh my gosh. You can turn and head towards him, like fall on and turn again so your sides. Okay, you know, so like, if I go. Like this guy over here? Yeah, so if I turn yeah. like this mm -hmm. and go like this. Yeah, bring the cat hair with you, perfect. There's nothing nice. you can do, there's cat nothing. Cat hair lives in this house. Is that as far as you can go? Was that 10 inches? That was five. Okay. And then I can move another five like this, right? Yeah. You reckon? Okay. Oh, okay. So. This is six inches away. Okay. That is medium. Which is no modifier. Yep. So still threes. Um, you didn't do any funky movements. Nope. But I'm small. You are small. So I'm going to be hitting you on fours. And I will be getting two dice hitting okay. on fours. Come on, live. No! Ha! <laughs> are you kidding me? Two threes? Uh, I couldn't even make one four? He lives. Okay, so that's all your ship activations, right? Maybe. Yes, it is. That's Maybe. your last one. So, um, essentially what's happened, just to recap, is I fled my fleet carrier from here. He was about there. I fled him this way. He's got a whole point down because he got flooded by CR-90 Corvettes. They came flying through the Imperial lines and Tried to chase him down, but he's surviving. The immobilizer is putting himself between the planet and your fleet. Um, my Star Destroyer is just moving up. Slow old bucket. And we have the fighter phase coming up. Now, I'm assuming at the end of this phase, there'll be a lot less fighters and bombers on the board. So it won't be near as confusing. It looks a little chaotic right it's, now. <laughs> it's chaotic right now, you're right. Um, but I moved up my strike cruiser. He wasn't in range. Um, we basically showed off most of everything else. Mm -hmm. um, your backline ships there, your carrier and your light cruiser didn't really do anything. No, they're just heading towards yeah, they were, the objective. Uh, okay, so we'll be back um, during the fight phase or the fighter and bomber phase and we'll maybe have a, an example of what's going on there. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're in the fighter phase. All the fighters and bombers have moved. How that works is the activated player, so me, I won the roll off at the beginning of the turn. I move three stands at a time. So I'll move three then the Rebels move three, then the Imperials move three, and the Rebels back and forth until everyone has moved. Um, how this game works is kind of like you lock that you can lock down stuff. So my first move was to move a TIE Fighter base, this guy here, and he touched both of these, this is the two X-Wing bases. So that my first activation locked down these two X-Wings, and then we just keep doing that kind of like in a strategic way until we have kind of the matchups we want. Now in the dogfight phase... There's a strict order of how things are resolved. The first thing is, are there any dogfights where it is fighters attacking only bombers? So first, you survey the field you or the space, I guess, and you see, are there any uh, fighters attacking only bombers? Then you move to fighters versus fighters. And then you move to what we call uh, an entanglements. And an entanglement is two types of, uh, let's say, what we have right here is an entanglement. There is several bases of fighters and a capital ship in a big brawl. So they come last. But first, we're going to see any fighters on bombers. And lucky me, there is only two. There is a phantom fighter attacking... Well, he's, they're fighters. Sorry, right here, there's two interceptors attacking a B-wing. 
and then there's an interceptor on his own attacking a B-wing on his own. So how you work that out is the fighters get to, to roll their hits before the bombers get to attack back. Now if the bomber survives, he gets to attack back right away, but he has to survive. So we go to our little stats and we see how many uh, dogfight, what's the dogfight rating on a interceptor? And it is two, which means you get two dice to fight. So we're going to do this guy here first, this interceptor on this bomber. We're going to roll two dice and you always hit. There's no negatives, no positive modifiers for dogfights. It's just fours. So we need fours while well, you're bringing the kitten up. So and do I have any fours? And no, I got a one and a two. So this interceptor failed to shoot down that B-Wing. Now the B-Wing gets to shoot back. And the B-Wing has a dogfight value of only one. But it has a, a bomb rating of three. So it's a much better bomber than it is fighter, which kind of makes sense. So honey, you will roll one dice and get a four. No. She got a one. <laughs> so that dogfight didn't affect anything. Uh, there was no hole points or hit points to take off, so it will stay in base to base until someone wins. The next one is right here, where we have two interceptors on a single B-Wing, which means I will now get four dice. So I'm going to grab four dice, looking for fours, and I got a six and a four, so I got two hits. Now the hole points, or what we call hit points, on a B-Wing is two. So two hit points, two hits we shoot down this B-Wing. So that stand is completely removed. Now this is the reason why I use the, the assets from Star Trek or Star Wars Armada is because I can actually physically adjust the hit points. But he's shot down and now those uh, interceptors are free to activate in the next turn. They're not stuck in combat. And that is the first dogfight. Now we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. Well, not really complicated, but here's another fighter on bombers only. Um, these three squadrons of Y-Wings are heading to try and attack this cruiser, the strike cruiser, but I have smartly put two TIE fighters in, uh, in the way. So we're going to do that. The dogfight value of TIE fighters is only one, but there is two of them, so I get two dice. Now even though there is three Y-Wings, fighters get to attack before bombers, so I need fours. I didn't get a single four. Now that is going to hurt me. I got a one and a three. Now the bombers get to fight back, and the Y-Wings have a dogfight value of also one. So you will get three dice, and you're looking for fours. One. You got one six, so one hit. Now TIE Fighters are very brittle. That will automatically shoot down one TIE Fighter. So that sucked for me. I thought I was going to do a lot better there. But that is, I think, all of the... That's all of the um, bombers on fight or fighters on bombers. Now we move on to fighters on fighters. We're just going to move over here because I see one. There's one right here. There's an X-Wing attacking a TIE Fighter. In this case, both players roll their dice at the same time and the effects are cumulative. So I have a single TIE Fighter, which means I get one dice. And you have an X-Wing. Slightly better, you will get two dice. So I'm hitting on fours, you're hitting on fours. You get one, I get two. I didn't get any hits. You got one, one hit. hit. So a TIE Fighter only can take one hit. So he's also destroyed. So that X-Wing won that battle. Which seems to make sense. And we're going to go through that. Um, we're not going to do every single one. But we'll do an entanglement on camera. But we're just going to do a whole bunch. And then we'll be back in a second. So we're just going to do an example of an entanglement. And we're going to start off with the easiest one that we can find here on the table. They're all pretty easy, but this is the, the most the easiest to explain. We have a TIE bomber attacking the Marauder and a Z-95 has come in to try and help. Now how this works is you add up the uh, point or you add up the attack value, the bomb run, or the sorry, the of the the bomber. So the bomber has a bombing value, sorry, no, a dogfight value, sorry. He has a dogfight value of one, he's not the best. The Z-95 has a dogfight value of what? Uh, one. And the you add the point defense value of the sh of the cruiser of the ship, which, and is, that, zero. which is zero. So basically, mm -hmm. we were each rolling one dice and looking for fours. Now, if the bomber survives, mm -hmm. he continues his bombing run against the actual ship. This is just to see if he survives the bomb run. Okay, I'm so, rolling this 
I kill you, and, and I do you do not kill me. I so, somehow, the Z95 has killed himself going in, so he is removed as a casualty, and the bomber now gets to do his thing. So now I get two shots okay. on your Marauder, because I have a bomb value of two, and I'm looking for fours again, and this goes straight to your hull, there's no saves, no shields, boom. Oh. One. Okay. And my hull is two. So I so shave I'm... a hull point off of you. Yep. So now I'm at one. So now you're at one, and I've also crippled you because you're at half strength. So that's that entanglement. We're now going to do the granddaddy of all entanglements. This is right here. <laughs> so I have two TIE bombers attacking this Nebulon B, but he has been intercepted by two X-Wings and a Y-Wing. So we add up our dogfight value. For me, it's a whopping two because TIE bombers aren't good at dogfighting. For you, it's two for the X-Wing, two for this X-Wing, so you're at four, and one for the Y-Wing. So you're at five. Five, yes. Plus the point defense value of the ship. Which is a one. So you're at six dice to my two. This is two, not going four. to go well for me. So I'm going to roll two. I'm looking for fours. I do one point of damage. Okay, I'm going to roll my six. So you got one, two, three, four. Well, four is enough to wipe out these guys completely twice. So the two bot TIE Bombers get shot down on their way in. But I did one hit to you. And in this game, the hits go in a strict order. So if there's bombers and fighters and capital ships in a, a melee like that, the damage always goes to the weakest, slowest unit, which happens to be the Y-Wing. And the Y-Wing only has one hull point, so the Y-Wing is destroyed. Now, and that is just to stop you from assigning damage to really tough fighters um, and that's that so we have done all of the fighters and bombers and that's what's left about half of them so casualty wise we're looking at the rebels took uh, lost two y-wings a b-wing three z-95s and an x-wing and the imperials they lost their armored cruiser or sorry armored nebulon b they lost one, two, three, four, five TIE Fighters, the TIE Defender, or sorry, the TIE Phantom, and two Bombers. Really sad about that Phantom, by the way, but he died to Z-95s, which was humiliating. But it did clear up the table quite a bit. <laughs> the table is a little less cluttered. Now, I'm using assets from the Armada game for the fighter stand, so if I had any sense, I'd make my own bases, which wouldn't look quite so busy. But they work for this purpose, and there's no point in really... Putting a lot more work into just a test game. Um, yeah, so that's the end of turn two. And that only took us a lot. I, I had to explain a lot of stuff to the camera, but that only took us about 25 minutes in total time. Yeah. So it's not, not hard. Um, and we'll be back at the end of turn three or in the middle of turn three. We're just going to do the initiative roll. Whoever rolls highest has to go first. Oh, I got a six. Oh, you got a one. Oh. So Imperials have the initiative and they're going to go first again and try and shoot down some Rebel Scout. Okay, so we're just going to do this on camera. Um, this is one of my final activations for the turn, uh, but my wife has kindly brought out, you can't really see it on camera, but an MC-40 light cruiser has come up. The, um, there's a strike cruiser right here, and they've been kind of exchanging fire back and forth, just taking a whole point off each other. But now my murder pizza slice is coming in, and we're going to unleash nine dice at that MC-40. And you are a medium ship, so nothing there. You're our medium range, or no, uh, reaching, so minus two. So we're up to fives, and you're medium size, so nothing there. So I am rolling nine dice on fives. Let's see if we can pop this guy off. Uh, I got one five. Oh, two fives. Well, I can't kill him, but I can cripple him. So two dice on fives. Your shields are a four plus, or fours. So one goes through, your hull points are, I'm oh, sorry, your, your armor value, I should say, sorry, I always get that wrong, it's fives, so that's a three, so I need a three to damage you, I damage you, so you're down from three to two. Now you started at four, yes. now you're at two, which means you're half strength, which means you're crippled, which means essentially all of your stats, your movement, your firing, all halved. And that is the first shot from my big ship, and we'll be back again, just wanted to show a little bit of action. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. We're back at the end of uh, ship, capital ship combat for turn three. Uh, what's happened is I've lost my trusty strike cruiser. He was 
right about there. Got picked on by the All Rebels. Uh, so him, him, and then him as well. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't long for this world. Uh, back down here, I've got my conga line of Imperial Heavies. Tried to take out that bloody bulk cruiser, but I only got two hull points off of him because reasons. And then they got picked on pretty harsh by that Liberty and this cheeky little bum tickling Nebulon B took a hull point off of the victory. And then to add um, insult to injury, the two little Corvettes that were here zoomed around and now are playing uh, tag with the immobilizer who has managed to lose a hull point. But again, they failed to damage the fleeing carrier. So that is the end of the turn three capital ship. We're again going to do the combat for the fighters and bombers. And at the end of this turn, there'll be even less on the table. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we've just removed a, a bunch more of everything, really. Uh, so you can see there's a lot less. We haven't done this uh, entanglement here or the bombing run over there on that um, bulk cruiser. But we're going to do them on camera. But up here, the two little naughty CR-90s have been annihilated by two squadrons of TIE Defenders. They're very nasty. I only had one shot to shoot them down, but they only have one hull point. So they both uh, crashed and burned um, on their suicide mission to take out the immobilizer. Uh, over here, we've um, basically one Z95 left. Everyone else is kind of gone. Over here, our entanglement is still going. These two TIEs are still trying to fight it out with these Y-Wings. And then over here, my bomber took out the, the light cruiser. So that's that. We'll do this one on camera. Let's move that dice out of there. So we might as well do the bombing run over here on the bulk cruiser. So how many point defense dice does your bulk cruiser get? Okay, so my bulk cruiser has a point defense of two. Two, now he's crippled, so he gets halved. So, so he gets one. one. So you get one shot, and one shot only, to annihilate me on my way in. Okay, here I go. I know. Yoink. That's a one. That's a one. Another <laughs> Imperial one, or another Rebel one. <laughs> now, since I'm still alive, I get to do my bombing run, which is two dice. And I will roll of those, roll of those, I'll roll those, and I need fours. So let's just move this back, see if I can kill him. Boom, boom, two hits. So, you how many hole points did you have left? One. <laughs> you had one or you had two? And this one? You had two. So, yes. the TIE Bomber finishes off that bulk cruiser. So, oh, he's gone. So, bye-bye, you scumbag. Uh, <laughs> well, seriously, look, I shot almost my entire, this side of the whole table shot at him and he still lived. <laughs> and it took an ugly TIE Bomber to take him out. Now we'll do this. This is a little bit more complicated, but we do it based on point defense and dogfight value. So you have uh, two, you have five X-Wings. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get 10 dice. Their dogfight value is two each. Okay. And then I will get for point defense on the Dreadnought. Or actually, these are two separate combats, sorry. There's two. So you will get six on this one here with the Dreadnought. And then the Dreadnought has a point defense value of, do, 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 probably one, but where is it? Point defense of one. So I get one dice, but I have my handy little escorting uh, tartan patrol cutter. And he has a point defense value of, come on. One. Of one. Now, in his escorting role, he doubles his point defense. So he has two. Um, One goes to two. And that is because he forgoes any activation on his own. He, for, he forgoes firing at other ships. The only thing he's concentrating on is shooting down fighters attacking its mothership or its parent ship. So he's doubled. Um, the crew's only focused on that, so that's why it's doubled. So he gets two. The Dreadnought gets one. So I get three dice. You get six dice. Let's roll them. We need fours. I got two. You got one, two, three. So how that works is... I shoot down one because there's two hull points on that. So I you lose one X-Wing and you get three, which is not enough to kill anyone. But now you get to do your bombing run. It's your bombing run. You have two shots to go through and kill me. So you're looking for fours here. Double one. 
The Dreadnought survives. Take that, you rebel scum. Oh my goodness. And <laughs> now we'll do this. Uh, you get four dice. Uh, my Victory Class Star Destroyer has a point defense of one, so I get one dice for him. Can I have the four dice that you rolled the four sixes on? Oh yeah, sure, here. I'll take those ones. Yeah. Oh, our, our kitten just tumbled down the stairs again. Um, okay, so I get one point defense, and then my Lancer Frigate uh, gets two point defense, doubled to four. <laughs> I took all your dice. Yeah, so uh, one, two, three, four, five dice. So I'm going to try and shoot you down. You don't get to do anything here because there's oh, no fighters. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and shoot you down. Five dice. I got, oh my god, I only got one hit. So I, I only take a whole point or a hit point off a single bomber or X-Wing. And now you get to do your bombing run. You get two dice okay. needing two. fours. I need fours. Yep. Uh, I got a three and a five. So, so one. you've shaved off another hull point. He's down to four hull points. And that sucks for me. So now you can see how difficult it is or ill-advised it is to send in just a few bombers against an escorted ship. So what, whereas you used your little escorts as uh, free-flying birds to come around and pester stuff. Which, I mean, they did a hull point on each ship. But mine are doing it to shoot down your fighters. And that is... The fighter phase, I'm going to zoom back out here. That is the fighter phase for turn what are we on? three. three. Mm -hmm. So we are done. Now we're on turn four. Another short one. Um, there's a lot less fighters and bombers on the table. And we're nearing the conclusion because I think stuff is going to start dying. Big ships dying next turn. We'll be back after turn four. Okay, we're back and the cat's obviously doing his thing with the ball. Um, but... The Rebels are going to fire with the Liberty class cruiser here. Uh, who are you going to target, honey? I am going to target your immobilizer. Oh, great. Yeah. Who else? Out of the front um, arc? Yeah. And anything and out of the then, side arc? Um, I'm going to attack him. Okay. So, the, okay, so, so first, uh, first him. So first the distance. Him. Distance is 15. 15. So that uh, on. Maybe 16. So right there? Yeah, 16. 16. So, you're, uh, so in our little chart here, 16, you are at extreme range. You're negative 3. So you're hitting on 6s. Okay. But my scale on my immobilizer... Um, scale 4, which is large. So plus 1. So, so fives. fives. Okay. So 3 and... dice using 5s. Nothing. Oh. Okay, but now here comes your big, um, yes. your big attack. So this should be a lot easier. So that is six inches so away. Medium range. I'm a medium sized ship, mm -hmm. and I moved regular movement, so I didn't go any faster than. So we we're at threes. Okay. Five dice on threes. Uh, three Ooh. hits. Three hits. Three okay, hits. so if I go back to my little chart here, we're just going to do this on camera just so you guys can follow along. Uh, Victory Class Store has five shields and six hull. So, or armor, I should say. Um, no, four. So, three hits. Yes. Okay, so three hits. I need fives. I don't, oh, I get one. So, two hits go through. Mm -hmm. My hull value is a four. Armor value, sorry, is a four. So, you need uh, fives or sixes to damage him. Ah, and there's a six. Damage. So he goes to three health. Now, how many hull points did he have to begin with? He had six, so... He is critical. He's crippled. Crippled. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that was your activation yes. with the Liberty. So both big ships have fired. Haven't really done anything, really. But you have... Who do I have anyone left? I have the victory. Okay, we'll be back in a minute after we figure that all out. Okay, so we have wrapped up the capital ship element of turn four. Um, things are starting to heat up now. Things are starting to take a lot of um, damage on the Imperial side, on my side here. My Victory Star, uh, Star Destroyer is now crippled, uh, now down to half hull points, as is my Dreadnought, down to two hull points. Um, basically, when you get in this close, you're hitting on twos, so there's really nothing that's going to stop you. 
Um, up here, this cheeky Nebulon B shaved off another hull point of the immobilizer. Uh, my fleet carrier is cowardly trying to get himself away. And what else happened here? Really not a whole lot else. The Marauder came around, took a pot shot, but I saved it with my shields. You took a good chunk down off of um, Oh, so I took starting, a... Yes, that's right. Um, so he's starting to take damage. My Dreadnought, before he was crippled, he kind of went this way and took a shot at him, taking a hull point off. Mm -hmm. And a shot at him and took a hull point off. So that was my only success. They attempted and did not succeed. Yeah, these two guys came up and didn't do a whole lot. Of course, no. the little... The MC-30 frigate is just trying to escape. So he, Slowly. <laughs> he's terrified. But yeah, so we're going to go on to the fighter, fighter portion. Yeah, phase. the fighter and bomber phase. And I, I need this pretty badly because just surveying the field here, I realized that I don't have hardly any fighters on this side of the field. Mobilizer has eight hull points left. One thing, though, that we forgot is you killed... This guy. Oh, yes, I killed the Volt Cruiser after a while. I yes. can't remember if we mentioned that before, but yeah, he's yeah, dead. Not sure. I just saw so him. So is the uh, MC 40 Light <laughs> Frigate. Here's all the dead bombers for the Imperials, along with an armored frigate, the dead bombers and fighters for the Rebels, and then I also have my picket forces, which are yeah. also dead. And one of our asteroids got knocked over and by the, the cat. <laughs> cat got a little annoyed and decided to throw an asteroid at us. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we'll be back after the fighter bombers have moved. And I need to find some way of getting my fighters over here to stop her from moving those X-Wings. Now that's one of the neat things about the fighter and bomber phase is the player with initiative moves three bases first. And then the uh, player without initiative moves three. So with my three moves, I have to move as many of my flight stands. There's a defender here, there, there's one over there. I have to move them into base contact and lock down her, her units. I'm not going to get them all, but I might get enough. Mm -hmm. So she has to spend another turn fighting with me before they can make their bombing run on the big ship. But we'll be back in a minute after that's all done. Okay, so we've done the movement of the fighters, um, setting up our bombing runs. Essentially what I've done is I've moved a TIE Interceptor here. And he is going to lock down these two X-Wing squadrons. He's probably going to die. I mean, definitely going to die. But he'll keep them from moving until the end of next turn. Same here. If a lone interceptor squadron tie down, tying down those two X-Wings. Over here, we just added more into the melee here. I added an interceptor. She added a Z-95. She's doing a bombing run, right? Yes, please. And your target is that Dreadnought, right? Dreadnought, So yep. two, two X-Wing squadrons are heading, heading in on that Dreadnought. Uh, that was what she did. And then all of her fighters are locked down and bombers are locked down. So I was free to send in my elite TIE defenders. They're going to try and pick on this Nebulon B. And then another one is going to pick on that MC-30. And hopefully at the end of this, there'll be a lot less fighters again. And we're getting down to the, almost the end of the game soon. I mean, eight points left. We'll see. Uh, uh, both of my ships here are crippled. So I'm really, I've lost this part of the table for sure. I just have to see how many hull points I can knock off of these ships before they get into firing range on the immobilizer. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so bombings and fighters are done. Here's the casualty list. Uh, two X-Wings and a, and a MC-30 that was damaged. I lost every fighter I have left on the board. So my three interceptors. Um, my two defenders, one took a hull point from the point defense, but I took, I crippled that Nebulon B. This is where the MC-30 was. He's dead. So what happened with you? So you took three hull points. Yeah, he's on four hull of, points left. Yeah. yeah, he has four hull points left. Um, I took your Dreadnought down by one hull point because you blew one of mine. Yeah. So oh, with my little uh, Tartan Patrol it. Cutter there, he adds two to the point defense, so it was three. So I had three shots on you, and you had uh, two shots on me. Mm -hmm. So I shot down one of your X-Wing squadrons, and you damaged me. So I'm on one hole point left. He's basically a flaming wreck floating through space. And my two TIE Bombers flew in. Your point defense, although you had two shots, you failed both. Mm -hmm. And I shaved three hole points off you. So that's where we are now at the end of turn four. We're starting on turn five. I think this would probably be the last turn of the game. I don't know exactly how much is going to remain. Uh, but you have three X-Wing squadrons here. Mm -hmm. 
a, B, uh, a Y wing, and a Z95, and another X wing free. You could easily just launch all them if you win initiative onto the mobilizer. So we'll do the initiative roll on camera because this is an important one. If you win this, you I haven't won. Not one yet. You haven't won a single one yet. Let's see, Imperials. Okay, four. I can beat a four. No, you, re <laughs> you rebel scum. Ah. Okay, so I might get one more chance to lock down your bombers before you come in. And yeah, we'll be back at the when there's something interesting to talk about. Okay, and so we are back on my side of the table. Um, so um, he is taking his Star Destroyer. Yep. And he is going to try and attack my crippled cruiser over here. Um Sorry. I get nine shots. Nine shots. I'm gonna shots. try and see if I can shoot this out of the sky. Uh, can I have three more dice over there, honey? What if I say no? <laughs> I'm gonna roll three. So nine <laughs> shots. Uh, okay. I normally hit on threes, uh, but I'm far away, so I'm hitting on fives. Mm -hmm. So I'm two. I'm two range brackets away, so fours, fives. But you are a large target, so I'm back down to fours, and you haven't moved very fast. So I am hitting nine shots on fours. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So five shots. Now you get. Okay. You have to try and save five shots. Now the good thing is Mon Calamari cruisers have very good shields, so you're saving these on four ups. Fours. Okay, here we go. You saved one. So four shots go through. Now if I roll four fives, I kill this cruiser outright. Let's see what happens. Nothing! Yes! It lives another day. Yeah, damn it. Okay, uh, we'll be back. That was my first activation. I mm -hmm. thought that was going to be newsworthy, but it turned out to be a bunch of hokum. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back in in a little bit. Okay, so very next activation. Uh, my wife has chosen to take her, her MC-80 uh, crippled star cruiser, and she is going to shoot out of every arc she has available. She's shooting the immobilizer out of her front arc. Uh, normally she would get five attacks, but because she's crippled, she gets uh, half rounding down, so two. She gets five out of her side. She's going to uh, target the victory again. Five divided by two rounding or uh, half rounding down, and she's got three out of her rear arc into the dreadnought. She, uh, three shots rounding down, two halved one. is one. So okay, so let's do let's the Which immobilizer first? first. Immobilizer first. So you're hitting on. Let's see how far away you are. You're 13, 14 inches, you are at long range. That's reaching. Reaching, so you're minus two. Minus two. So your threes go to fives, but nice. because I'm a large target, you're back up to fours. So uh, three shots, or uh, two shots on fours. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Damn it. Okay, oh. that's what you needed. Okay, so same thing, <sighs> uh, but you're hitting on threes. Your range between the victory is six, so medium is nothing, nothing size. So you're hitting on threes. Okay. Two shots on threes. Yes, I got one. One, one hit. I have a five plus shield. Nope, nothing. Nada. And now your rear poop shot at the dreadnought. Okay, it's one dice. I'm hitting on threes. Yes. I hit. Uh, I need a five to save it. No. No, and you need a five or six to kill me. Nothing. <sighs> so again, another cool activation wasted on poor dice rolling by us. But still, my fleet lives to strike again. Okay, we'll be back again when something interesting happens this time. Okay, so we thankfully didn't record the horrible <laughs> dice rolling that we just went through. Everything shot on the table except for him. We're going to do him on camera right now. But everything shot and we hit. We failed to save on shields. But we rolled an amazing amount of ones to damage, which is nothing. So essentially, nothing has happened, even though everything has moved and fired, because we couldn't damage anything. You know, the, the Liberty moved up, prime position, five shots, no damage. Rebel transport or um, carrier moved up, one shot, no damage. One shot out here, no damage. It was insane. This guy turned around, had a butt shot on the, on the Dreadnought, no damage. I'm just going to say it's because we like each other so much. Yeah. Maybe the Imperials and the Rebels are starting to get along. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, my carrier just kind of continued its cowardly advance around there. <laughs> and I had a choice to make with the Immobilizer. He is still a Star Destroyer, so he's got lots of firepower. I could kind of turn and move away from the fighters and bombers. Or I could move up closer and maybe destroy 
that cruiser. Um, it'll be hard to destroy it, but I have a chance. So I decided to move up. So he's moved up five inches, and he's going to get his murder pizza slice shot into the side of that MC-80 Liberty. So we'll do that on camera. Um, immobilizer. Front arc. He only has six. That's because he uses up so much of his space for those whatever they're called, interdictor balls, I'm not sure. Um, again, range, you're fairly close. Within eight, so you're medium range, so zero, but you are a large target. So threes go down to twos, so uh, six shots on twos. And that is uh, six, six hits. Hit. But you do have Mon Cal shields, which are four plus. Okay. So six fours. <laughs> so... Uh, Two. So four shots go through, but I still need fives or sixes to damage you. So let's see. Oh no. Uh, one damage. Okay, so we'll be back. Only did one damage, but you're now on three, which means you're crippled, and she broke him off the flight stand. So <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if you could see her face. Anyway, that was a pretty powerful shot. Blew it right off its stand. Right back. Okay, we're back. Even uh, we got some mid-flight repairs going on here. He's back mm -hmm. on a stand. Rebels tried to eject and flee the map, but couldn't. I glued them down pretty good. Um, now we're going to move on to the fighter and bomber phase, which was really important for me to win the initiative, and I did again, again. for the fifth, <laughs> fifth, fifth straight turn. I now get a chance, one final chance, I think, to lock down those bombers and fighters that are coming in. Uh, because quite honestly, I thought that these two large rebel ships would give this guy more, more of a run for its money, but... They're not, not with me at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> they're now uh, both crippled, mm -hmm. so their firepower is greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. And I have only lost two hull points. And my Star Destroyer is slowly making its way in, although it's kind of tickling things on the way through. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to like annihilate stuff, but it's really... Our rolling has just been... Abysmal. The cat was playing a bit and fell asleep while playing. Yeah, it's... <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know much how long this game's going to go on for, but we're almost at the end. We're right back. <laughs> All right, so my elite um, TIE Defender Squadrons have moved off. They have... One's chasing down this guy. One's suiciding into that guy. Those two X-Wings. Um, the third one is going after the bombers and Z-95s that are left. And you got to move one thing on your own. And you're chasing down my TIE Bombers. Yep. So good. no bombing one on the Immobilizer, which is really good news for me this turn. And we will be back at the end of the casualty removal. I wish you could. I wish I hit record a uh, ten seconds, five seconds, three seconds earlier. The quote that just came out of my wife's mouth. It ended with Badonka Donka. No, it wasn't. It, it was the one from the office. It, you said Remember? Badonka Donka at the end of that. <laughs> well, I don't know the word he said. It's early in the morning, so we haven't been drinking. She's just a whack job. Anyway, here's the casualties from that bombing run. Uh, lots of X wings and a Y wing. And my two TIE Defenders out of my three and my two TIE Bombers. Essentially, we annihilated each other. Those TIE Defenders are really good at dogfighting. So even though I had three dice, she had four. I got three hits. She got four hits. So we just deleted each other. each other up. <laughs> um, the bombing run that she went in on my Dreadnought with one hull point left. I shot him down with point defense. Thank you to my hardened patrol cutter. Uh, the Z95 is now looking down at a TIE Defender with one hull point left each. So I get three shots, or I get three dice next uh, next round, she gets one. And that's it, we got two stands of fighters and bombers left. But I need to win initiative this time. Well, if I you win an, if you win initiative, win. really, your two ships are crippled. But anyway, that is the end of turn five. We are now on turn six. And I said every, for the last two turns, it's like probably the last turn of the game, but I think the Imperials have this in the bag <laughs> unless she can but donk a donk something out <laughs> of her dice bag. One sec. Uh, so look, yeah, can. so we'll do the initiative roll on camera because it's very important. So I will roll my dice. You'll roll yours. Uh, one each. You can win. I believe in... Fuck! You rolled a... Uh, two. A two to a three. Imperials. Oh. <laughs> well, now you made that PG-13 video. Thank you so much. Oops. Um, Sorry. That's six turns that you didn't Sorry. get initiative. <laughs> I've not won initiative one time in the entire game. Okay, we'll be back after movement. Okay, so um, my wife has calmed down a bit after losing initiative. Um, I had to wash her mouth out with soap, but it's <laughs> but it's 
<laughs> At least it was good tasting sofa. That's weird. What an odd thing to say. Um, <laughs> who did I marry? What is going on? I don't know. What, what was in your tea this morning? Hey, you knew what you were getting yourself into. That's true. I did. <laughs> your dad did tell me to get out. He did. He warned you. Uh, so she moved her MC80 up here, thinking she was all, all that in a bag of chips, and flopped everything. She took a whole point <laughs> off the, the victory, but her insane rolling to hit is great, but to damage, ones. All ones. All of it. Um, I think I, I got one, two, and that's how I got one hull point off of victory. I did move the immobilizer in a little bit further. My murder slice opened up at everything, and I didn't do a single thing. No. So she saved all her shield saves. It was disgusting. I'm telling you, it's because you guys are joining the rebels. No. We're killing rebels. And now for the two coup de gras, I am moving the Star Destroyer up five inches closer and we're going to unload into your cheeky MC-80. Nine shots. Right. One, two, three, nine. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, he's oh. a murder slice. Um, nine shots. I think you're a big target. We're on threes. I missed once, twice. So <gasps> seven hits. So seven, four plus shield saves. I'm oh, saving on what? On fours. You got pretty oh, much shields here on these, big, on these rebel ships. Ooh. That's a lot of fours. That, what, one? <laughs> oh my god. I needed five or six to damage him. At least I ah. damaged him. But that was absolutely pathetic. That Star Destroyer, Lord Vader, will not be pleased. Okay. Um. Wow. All right. Back again in a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so my wife is now furiously getting new dice because we just <laughs> rolled another abysmal amount of ones. I mean, a sickly amount of ones. I think out of the eight or ten dice rolls we had, we got seven or eight ones. Um, so nothing has really happened. Um, over here, Marauder went up the butt of the, uh, the Dreadnought, rolled a one. I decided to screw you, Marauder, moved up my Victory Class Star Destroyer, unloaded, rolled ones. She moved up here, rolled a couple of ones, but she did knock off a whole point off of the... Mobilizer, he's almost a half strength. The only uncrippled rebel ship is this baby pizza slice rebel carrier. Um, so if I can cripple him, the game is over this turn because no one else can hyperspace out, even if they kill him. It's like the scene from uh, Rogue One near the end where the ships are all kind of like floating around as Vader showed up in his Star Destroyer. All the ships are kind of crippled. Um, but yeah, so we will. Do initiative again. Oh no, we for the fighter and bomber phase. We'll do that real easy. I get three, you get one. Let's see if we kill each other. I, I got have a one. new dice. I kill you. Ah. You kill me. Finally, I got a six on a dice. In my, my new dice. Every single fighter and bomber in the game has gone down. They're all down. And now this is definitely the last turn because I am for sure going to cripple that last rebel ship. Be right back. Oh, actually, initiative. Can you win it once? A three. Yes! No! How I wanna have rolled another one! Aha! Okay. This, right the dice back. is gone! Uh, I wasn't gonna start recording this, but she just won initiative for the first time in seven Finally. for the first time in seven turns. Um, the last turn six, we she took a whole point off the mobilizer again. I took a whole point off the MC80. You killed my marauder? I killed the marauder that was right there tickling the bum of the dreadnought. And we are basically going to call it at the end of this last turn because there's not much left on the board. All the rebel ships are crippled. I still have almost a full strength or a full strength Star Destroyer, half, more than half strength um, immobilizer. And you really only have this rebel frigate who is now down to one whole point from being crippled. And when that happens, no one can escape. And we're going to track you down and annihilate you. Okay, so we'll be back after the end of the game. So actually, I'm just going to come right back. Um, it's not as close as it might as uh, it's closer than I might be talking about because I just realized as she won initiative because I'm so used to winning initiative I didn't even realize she gets to go first. He is one whole point away from being crippled. If he's crippled, he can't use his ability, his special ability, which means the one on crippled ship can escape. So she could still technically escape with one ship and leave the rest of her friends. Burn, okay. Burning. Um, so we're going to do this on camera. Uh, who, so who are you going to activate first? Okay, so Take I'm Take a little activation going... token away here. Oh yeah, activation token. So you're going to activate who? Okay, so um, I'm going to activate him. Yep, yeah, okay. So we're going to move him up a little bit. So yes. he, he could probably just, he's going slow now, so he's probably going to be like yeah. there. Yes. And you get uh, two shots. 
Okay. Hitting on uh, twos, because uh, I'm big. I'm a large guy. Okay, ready? Yeah. Two, Two hits. hits. Now I need a five. No fives. So if you get a five okay. or six here, you win. There's one six. She gets a six. He goes to four hole points, which makes him crippled. He can still fight, but he's no longer got any of his special abilities. And this guy goes... Pew! He's gone. I can hyperspace So uh, Mon Mothma was on this ship, apparently. And she's off, leaving the entire Rebel Alliance burning and floating in space. And that is the end of the game. Um, pretty close game, actually, for a narrative game. We didn't actually add up any points. There was no points added up. We just got some ships that looked fun. And we played a fun game. I just to try it out. Now, we played this game uh, over the course of last night and this morning. Um, because my battery ran out last night. Um, and we recorded and we stopped to have something to eat and we talked a lot and I recorded and talked to you guys a lot but that doesn't mean it took us like four hours to play it only took us maybe an hour and a half two hours at most mm -hmm. uh, and if we I know the stats of these ships off the top of my head because I spend uh, a lot of time looking at these things and adjusting them and talking about them so I know the stats off the top of my head what to roll what the whole points are uh, once she is up to that point or the other players up to that point you guys can do this without even looking at the charts because there's really not a whole lot of information there. It becomes uh, second nature after a while. Mm -hmm. um, and this game can be done in two hours, I would say, for a large game like this. So the Rebels came out of the asteroid field and they managed to cripple the Immobilizer and escaped with one ship. Everything else is burning. Uh, the battle could go on for another turn or two, but I think, I think an, a nine dice attack superstar destroyer will eventually chase these guys down like they're going mm -hmm. they're going slower than him now whereas he was going slower than everybody else at the beginning from way over there he came all this way they won't be able to escape now this little rebel frigate is hiding behind the planet from the star destroyer which is clever but that's it that's the end of the game that's uh, our rule set called it's a trap <laughs> and we hope you enjoyed and we'll talk to you again soon bye for now